Hello. Who is who is here that was here on um, for the first session that I did this morning? Iggy, you were here. Stephen was here. Anybody else? I'm going to have to review a little bit of what we just covered to make sure we got everybody on speed, up to speed. There we go. Um, these sessions I'm doing primarily um, are Google Slides. So I'm going to share them to the Google Drive as well. So you can go back and listen to the recordings, look at the scores, look a little bit more carefully. And we didn't, because I was messing around with Zoom much, so much, we didn't have enough time to do all of the steps. One of the things I wanted to do uh, at, in that first session today was to have you notate some things. I will have you notate some things today. Please get out paper or a pen and the staff paper that's in your in your uh, uh, folders, in your binders. So get those out now. Um, I certainly should do that. I think that's exactly right. Uh, and you're all welcome to come in. There we go. But these sessions are, um, there we go. Recording is in progress. Conceptions of Time should be a fantastic title of a piece for uh, Lucas. I can believe this would be a title that you would jump on and I will give it to you for free, no copyright. No copyright. Conceptions of Time. Or maybe George Crumb would write something like this. I don't know. Um, so I'd like to at least take a little bit of time. What am I doing here? Everybody. Okay. Some of this is going to be review. Some of it's going to be old, uh, new stuff too. So let's uh, let's get started here. I always start. Uh, and when I say always, I mean every time. I always start with a definition of music, OST, organizing sound in time. It's so easy and so subtle. This was uh, partly uh, created by composer John Cage. He and, and sort of his, his people looked at these, this, how do we define what music is? If you can, can, if you can envelop John Cage's music, and he was a theorist, 20th century theorist on music, very much of an experimentalist. He, uh, and I, later this week, I'm gonna be playing some of his music on my D, uh, WWXDs, but uh, Cage is incredibly important uh, compositionally as pieces, but also theoretically about aesthetics and how we approach music. And in fact, he cracked open the Western brain and said, you know, I'm just gonna have radio I'm going to use radios, radio broadcasts. I'm, I'm just going to be static on some things. You know, we broadcast from other things. And on a whole show, he's going to be just radios. Or he would have himself recording uh, a lecture and then four speakers playing in the room, both, both spatially and not really coordinated. And people were saying, well, that's not, that's just him recording his, his voice. But he then started developing the theories, that the aesthetic theories behind what he was working on. Um, and I will be talking about that later this week. And actually, Mary Kate did a thing called John Cage's Music Box uh, a few years ago, and it's on our YouTube channel. So some pe people could look at that. But conceiving of music, and this is really about you and how you are going to move forward. Uh, we started by the, by the way. Um, oh, 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 I'm oh, I'm way in. Oh, gosh. Hold on. Right, right. Here we go. We're at that stage in this session. Um, it, it, today, Monday, we're talking about almost all of our WWXDs are about how to generate musical ideas. Uh, next, next day, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about capturing and then polishing on Wednesday and producing starting on Thursday. But the conception of um, time is about how you generate and capture and polish and then go back to generate and then polish and then bend the capture. Oh, we're going to start producing. Oh, then we're going to go back to generating. So your creative process, may, you may not have thought of it this way before, 
but you're going back and forth all the way through your process. And the question for you really is to be articulate about what your decisions are. Where am I right now? What do I need to do next? And when you're starting out a project and you are starting out both on a prompt on Kim Sherman's music today, but also getting your creative project done this week, you have to be thinking in terms of, well, how do I get started? And our first session this morning was about, let's look at the background, the middle ground, and the foreground, the rhythms and the beat, and then the pulse underneath the, your musical idea. And you start with that, and if you just listen to that for 60 seconds, just sit and listen to what pulse you've got going on in your heart. Feel your pulse, find that for 60 seconds, listen, and you will find by the end of that 60 seconds, you've already got a musical idea. It's an amazing, miraculous thing. It comes from us and we don't even know it. And it's part of our body, our heart and our brain as well. Okay, OST, organizing sound in time, which is how do I conceive of music? By organizing my time, the time that we're listening into a piece of music, you've got to trust your heart, which is your pulse. And you've got to trust your body, which is your beat. And then you start using your mind in a very interesting ways. And this is why I'm talking today about conceptions of time, because I'm going to sort of push the edges of what we think of in the world of sound, how, to, how the world is moving, not just how does Bach move or just how does John Cage move, but not just Western conceptions of time, but looking outside of the West and finding inspiration there. Let's see, I'm in the right place. There we go. Gosh. Oh, there we are. Yep, 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 yep. Sorry. <laughs> there are multitudes of rhythm. Uh, we've talked about pulse, beat, rhythm, meter, and tempo. Uh, and we thought, yes, earlier today, pulse is a slower underlying background pulse moving the music forward. Beat is something that would probably be about this speed. Pulse would be about this speed or slower, faster. And rhythm would be all the rhythms on the surface would be foreground. And one of the things we did not talk about is tempo. If you've ever done this on a DAW or even on, your, on a metronome, Take different pieces at different, at radically different tempi. Take a really fast piece and play it really slow. You change the entire nature of the way you're hearing that piece of music. So that's something to start thinking about. I want to preface what I'm about to say. I am not an ethnomusicologist. If you look at me every day, you look at me and say, there walks an ethnomusicologist. That would be the wrong conclusion. I am not an ethnomusicologist. But I am a student of all music in all time. I'm really curious specifically about how we might think about other people, not people that we know, not the people in our network, but people in different times, centuries ago. What, how are they conceiving of music? And OST is the definition of music, organizing sound in time. So I'm learning about the world and the wide varieties of how the world hears and uses music. And I'm not just a person from the outside trying to understand, I'm trying to understand it from somebody who's a practitioner who's in the middle of making that music because I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna make my own music. And I think I'm trying to infuse that with you as well. Did I say I'm not a musicologist? Yes, I did say that. I am a composer. So, some of the cultural conceptions of time, we are immersed in the West, Western culture. And so we sometimes don't even recognize how we understand time. And because we are, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. And oftentimes that includes meter, which I've bold faced here. Meters is really a Western conception of time. There are conceptions of time that are circular, that uh, there is no beginning and there's no end. There's no downbeat. Um, a Ghanaian a drummer friend of mine, Peter uh, Soamensa, he, he was trying to teach me how to play a gourd 
that has uh, little seashells in a netting around the gourd. And they said, okay, here's the, here's the rhythm. I said, so where's the downbeat? Because I was having a hard time doing the, the, the getting the rhythm. He said, there's no downbeat. I said, well, where, 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 do, we, where do we come in? He said, you, you just come in. I said, yeah, but I, I need to know where the stress is. He said, there is no stress. You have your rhythm. And there, you are just doing this rhythm over and over again on the gourd. Other people have other parts. And you just become part of this timeline, which is circular. And the conception of time is not linear, which is what meters are. And if you turning pages, you understand that whole idea of music being a linear thing. This conception of time was completely foreign to me. And I was horrible gourd player. Took the longest time to figure out how to do gourds. Um, and still I'm horrible still today. It's because I was trained and imbued with the Western conception. I need a downbeat. Is this the, what's the downbeat? And he said, you can come in anytime you want and fit into the music because it's the pulse is going on all the time and you can go in to the music on the end of three, which is what the Western conception time would be. And that's would be your downbeat. There, that's when you start. Just start. Don't think of it as down or three. Think of it as strictly as a, a circular line, a timeline circular. So our Western conception of meter is going to be changed. And uh, this is a repeat from what we did earlier uh, today. This is the Afrobeats, and it's an audio. And it's now what's interesting about this, and I want you, I want you to sort of wrap your brain around this, that the, this is a, an African producer creating pop music using Western technology that really thought of meter downbeats. And he is bending it very, very subtly. He will layer in different beats on top of, uh, on top of each other. And I think if, I need you to think like he is thinking in a circular form of time not as a linear form with a downbeat and a second beat and a third beat and a fourth beat. Listen to what uh, our, our producer here talks about. Are you guys getting this on the headphones? You'll get this on headphones. I can't get the uh, speakers to work. It, it Sarah didn't either. It just been sort of like, don't know what to do. Um, there are a couple of ones. Oh. Do you want me to check out the speaker? Yeah, I'll get that. You do that and I'll do this. There you go. go. Eric is assisting me here because I am, I don't want to waste time. It's basically what it comes down to. Oh, no, did I stop it? Yeah, that's all right. We can come back to it. Oh, geez. Okay. We can get back to it. But we are still recording. Let's see. There we go. Maradona was a global hit. DJ Snake remixed it. Hey, Randall, there's no sound online. I think I have to unshare and then come back in. You can go to more. Uh, hold on. Hello, is it working? But now, no, can't hear it. Okay, I'm gonna. You should be putting uh your headphones on in this room. I think you guys can hear it on your speakers, on your computers. If you aren't, you might need to put headphones in. I'm not hearing anything. Of course, produced it. He broke it down for us. I can hear it on. I started just being, I started with the drums. Please mute your mics. It's working now. There's also this. The guys, I'm gonna come back. In millennial Africa. And it isn't political. Afrobeat's lyrics are mostly about love, sex, and money. <laughs> Sar says the secret weapon of Afrobeats is basically just one thing. 
the beat. The beat just has to move you. Nigerians are very impatient <laughs> people. <laughs> like, once, the, once that rhythm in, stops, uh, no, like, hey, hey, what's, what's going, going on? on? One of the best examples is Maradona by Nigerian pop star Niniola. Maradona was a global hit. DJ Snake remixed it. And SARS, of course, produced it. He broke it down for us. I started this beat, I started with the drums. Okay, see and how that also, rhythm on pink? Yes. And obviously the kick drums. Now it looks this like a me. Bass line. One, I think when I played two, the bass three, line and four. you know, it just made everything come together. Then also, and their keys. And add her vocals to it. And we have Maradona. So as, as African as this sounds, it also sounds like universal, like anyone can hear this and, and, relate, to it. and relate to it. And for me, that's a winner. Maradona by Nigeria. Okay. The important thing that I heard this this time with a different set of ears, because if you were here earlier today, we played this in, in regards to how we hear the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. Now I'm look, I'm trying to get you to think about how this music is put together. Is it linear? It's interesting because we're using Western technology and we're trying to, to but we conceive of music in a circular form. And so what is interesting to me is that pink version of the of the beat that, that he was doing, um, putting it together so that it, it really isn't, ooh, there we go, come on, there we go. Uh, it really isn't uh, a downbeat. Don't think of it in terms of a downbeat. Uh, there we go. Can we do this? Yes. Maradona One more by time. Nigerian pop star Niniola. Maradona was a global hit. DJ Snake remixed it. And SARS, of course, Here we go. produced it. He broke it down for us. I started this beat, I started with the drums. And it's also this. And there's a beginning and end of that little, it's like a loop. And if you've got any, any electronic music experience, you know how, it easy, how easy it is to do a loop and then set loops against each other that aren't square with each other. And so that's sort of the conception of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, we're gonna talk about, uh, here we go, yep. Pulse, rhythm, beat, and is there a meter? Could you, did you hear meter in that last piece that we just listened to? Anybody got a meter? Yes, you got a four. Eric, would you tell us on your, unmute your microphone. Did you hear a beat? And what was it? I did hear a beat. <clears throat> I heard one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Boom. Very syncopated. It is syncopated. Um, and what's interesting is he was also saying, you know, this is universally popular. It's gonna, it's gonna appeal to everybody. <clears throat> but this is about conception of upper time rather than how it's presented and how you receive it. And one of the things that's happened in, with the technology is it works in a really square mode. If you go into the technology DAW, it's, it's gonna be square, almost always four, four. It's hard to do three, four in a DAW, but you can do it, but it's not normal. Um, and here's a, a little sidebar, just concept, just uh, referencing uh, how we see cultures uh, and how old our cultures are. Future oriented is this is, I've done some research on this, and you can see the link on past oriented is that orientated. That's, it's not right spell, it's not spelled right. It's oriented, not orientated. Um, but it's if you click on that when you I put it in, and I'll correct the spelling. You can check the reference where it's where it's talking about future oriented, present oriented, past oriented, and pre-industrial cultures. And this has to do with how long that culture has existed. 
way before the, the white folks came to the, the, the North America, there was a culture that was very much older. But what's interesting about this is who's talking about the culture and how are we talking about it? Uh, and this future-oriented cultures were seen as a young culture because the European culture that came to the, this continent is relatively new. Present-oriented cultures are older than American culture, France, for example, European cultures, but also you could say present-oriented cultures might be colonial cultures, might be um, cultures in the world that are maybe just a few hundred years old. Uh, Past-oriented cultures, Ghanaian drumming, who I just referred to with, with Soamensa, but also Indian music, ancient court music, Chinese music, Japanese music. There's music that's been there for centuries and maybe millennia. And these pre-industrial pre cultures are an inspiration for a number of composers. We're gonna to listen to some of that pre-industrial cultural music. And what's interesting to me is that we are listening to this music like that Afrobeats music, popular music, but its, Af its roots are African and their conception of time. This pre-industrial cultures that we're gonna to listen to their music uh, are, uh, there's no verb tense, for example, in Hopi, Hopi language. There's no past. There's no future. There's just time, every, all the time. Um, and the wheel of time conception is definitely from the Buddhist and Hindu. And how do we, call, how do we conceive of that time in the 20th century mindset? Our headspace now is completely, we're immersed in this. We can't even think outside of our own world. And um, here are three mods, modes of that music and how we've organized music over time. Dance movement, dance is movement, music that we move to. There is song that we sung, sing that music, which could be together or alone. Uh, and that's, again, something that's shared, but oftentimes mostly shared, oftentimes only shared, but every once in a while, solo singers come out, are, are, are heard. And then there's this other thing that happens in some cultures, in African cultures, for example, where all music is, they, there's no word for song and a different word for dance. It's the same thing, song dance. So you dance and sing or, and make instrument, instrumental music. And we don't say instrumental music and vocal music, it's just music. And music, when we say that, is also dance. There's also this other kind of music, which is gestural. Um, it's sometimes text-based, but sometimes not. And it's a, a completely different kind of organization of how you put music together. And what is the definition of music? OST, organizing sound in time. And so gestural music is when you have people doing this together, how does that, how do you put it together? How do you think of that? How do you put it together? Is it done by oral tradition or are you notating it? And then there's poetic recitation. It could be in secular, secular words, for example, secular world, for example, in opera, but also in sacred settings as well, together as well. And sometimes solos, sometimes together. And then finally, there's Ives. Charles Ives is an American composer, and I will end this session today with Charles Ives. Let's listen to this. Close your eyes and listen to this. Is this a dance, song, a song dance? gestural poetic recitation. There a pulse, almost like a heart pulse. Ba dub, ba dub, ba dub. Is this a dance? Is this a song with people, multiple people, one person? Is it a song dance? 
Is it a poetic dead recitation? Is it gestural? How do we understand this music? beginning. like the beginning again. Okay, Becca, how would you write that drum rhythm? What's the tempo? What is the, uh, what's the pulse? What's the, what, how's it organized? Lucas, you have a shot? Put unmute your microphone. Okay. Um, it sounds like a repeating pattern to me of like da 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 da. And it's not really accented, but one of the notes is slightly shorter, as you mentioned, like a heartbeat of sorts. So I would probably just either write it out like because you can't get exact, um, but I would say something like two notes, one shorter, one longer. So is there a meter? Are these I mean, just really. eight notes? Hmm? Are these just eight consecutive eight notes? No, they aren't. I mean, you can interpret them as such, but yeah, you could notate it that way. But that's not what's happened. Yeah, there's there's something a little bit more. It's like a it's not exactly on trying to quantize it like that takes away some of whatever makes it. And it, what's interesting is that 20th century conception of time. Mm -hmm different than this conception of time. There is no past tense in Hopi language. And the idea is possibly that there is no past, this has always been there. All we're doing is hooking into it. That pulse, bup, 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 bup. It's, you could notate this in Western notation, but it'd be a transcription of what's actually the practice. There's a practice that was going on millennia and now we're recording it capturing it and now we can come back and sort of notate it and we're going to end this session with a, some an artist who's taking ancient music and trying to negotiate the space between old 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 music preconception of of timeline and working in a, in a circular form next piece There we go. Close your eyes. Is this a dance, a song, a song dance, gestural or poetic recit recitation? Low drums. The clanging bells. Is it one voice or many voices? Is it unison or is it not?
that the same name or is that something else? have a low drum. What else? Take your microphone off. There's a drum. That F, that F is there. I can't tell if it's getting repeated, but it does, it does kind of lift up for a second sometimes. There's also the dressing on top. And there's like this simple thing. So I'd say maybe four four or five ladies. That's great, thank you. Um, we're, Caleb, are you in somewhere else? Do you hear something else happening besides those layers that Diggy just mentioned? Don't take your microphone off so we can hear. Did you ask the question again? Yeah, there's things going on. There, it's not just one thing happening. And I'm calling them layers, I'm not sure what what else to call them. For me, it's a conception of, of layers of sound, and it just seems to be rolling from one thing to the next. But there's more than one thing going on. What do you hear right now? Uh, just a, like a, there's like a droning. There's always right, is, something going kind of consistent, and other things tend to come in um, around it. In the drone. Can you hear me? Can you take off your microphone for just a second? Can you take your microphone off? Unmute, yeah. What what do you hear happening right now? You're gonna have to get close to the microphone, it can barely hear you. What do you hear? It sounds like some kind of like, I guess like procession. Yes, there are definitely percussion. But what are these things going, the, the, the sustained sounds that are going on? I like that. Is that singing? No, it's some kind of instrument. Like a trumpet or yeah. trombone or something. What's interesting is not just the sounds that were going on, but how this is unfolded in time. This is really, oh, here we go. Something else is happening. What? They're like bagpipes, but they're more like shams or oboes more like oboes. And they've got these bells, these clang, you can see in the picture, these, uh, these bold symbols that are, are clanged together. It's a very subtle, plus they put together because it's not just happenstance, but it's not precise. It's almost like a shopping list. We're gonna go down this thing, we're gonna do down this thing, you know, we're gonna do this thing. And there is a text that's being chanted sort of in unison you could say not not precisely unison but it is pretty they're together and i agree this is probably not a song dance like the war dance we heard just a short while ago the uh, hope beat here's an artist who's from minnesota his name is steve tibbetts He's been, for the last 30 years, been traveling around the world and recording music that he hears happening. Street musicians, sacred performances, uh, people on boats just out working, working songs. 
he recorded this. This is Tibetan Buddhist chant, which again, the conception of time is circular. And here he's, he's interacting. He's doing something which I think can be called appropriation or quotation now with recordings. And the question for me, is this using well or abusing, not using it well, when you hear some other music and you incorporate it in your own composition? I want you to listen to this for a second. Close your eyes for a second. conception of time and conception of the world and how it's put together. I like the Hopi piece that we heard and I see kept saying, okay, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. We're gonna hear something very similar. And the question would be the I still don't know the answer to this. Second time through. It feels like it's a poetic, poetic presentation. Okay. And it is, in fact, that. Go to this website. You can do that. By, I'll be sharing this on your on the uh, Google Drive. You can go and check out these specific video. All right. I'd like you to read the score of this piece. This is opera, Johnny Skiki. That's how you pronounce it. It's not Johnny Chichi. It's Gianni, Gianni, Gianni Skiki, a one act comic opera. And this is back and forth between recitation, a solo voice where the, you follow the singer, a recitative and uh, an accompanied square or precise accompaniment. So here we let's listen to this and see how it's put together. No, Marco lo senti? Che dico una signa? Sì, c'è di che? The, the poetic or lyrical rhythms of the language are notated, discrete notation. And then from that arises an accompaniment. And on top of that, the poetic or lyrical language is placed. The accompaniment and the singing are not 
set on top of each other, not in unison. Okay. Now, I like to think of this as the four freedoms of music, of rhythm, regular things that are regular. We can all feel and the beat and the pulse and we all come together. Bach is an example. Um, there's the complex, which has mixed me meters. And um, this is actually music that we play together with as well. Pulse, meter, rhythms. And we feel some connection and there's a bit regularity of the Hopi drum beat, if you remember. And there's a way this holds it together. If you were in the morning session today, we were listening to gestural music, which was by Anton Weber. It didn't, you didn't, couldn't listen to it and go, oh, that's in 4-4 four, four, or 38-12 or whatever meter it was. You couldn't tell from listening to it. We've heard fluid construction of time, which maybe is circular, is circular. And we've listened to the Buddhists and the Tibet, Tibets. And I would say the fluid would also describe the Puccini recitative using poetic lyrical language determining the rhythms. And one of the interesting things you can do as a composer is think of a poem and then give the performers the freedom to express that rhythm in their instruments. Rather than discrete notation, say, here's the poem, play the notes that I give you in the rhythm of the poem as if you were speaking. That's, res that's recitative. And then there's Ives. I always like to end with something by Ives. But first, remember, we've got rhythm with melody, with harmony. It's hard to tease rhythm out from the other two, but because they're, in they're integrated, all one thing at the same time. And there's a gestalt of those, all those together. Each element, the rhythm, melody, and harmony, contains a multitude, layers of ways different people have organized that sound in time. There is a multitude within rhythm, pulse, beat, rhythm, meter, freedom, and then together and then separate. All of those aspects of way of generating ideas, this is, this is a wide open world of how to organize sound. And when you work in a, in a DAW or you work on a software application that's telling you the rhythm, and the beat and the pulse, you're not completely open to all the things. So one of the things I would come to recommend to all of you is don't work on a DAW to start when you're conceiving. Use paper and pencil and don't get stuck in a beat. Find a pulse, absolutely find a pulse, but open your ears to other ways of constructing rhythm. How does this help me generate musical ideas? Take a moment. Imagine music that is either song or song dance or gestural or poetic. And what would that sound like if you were to open your brain to ways of thinking of what, how to start something? And then how do you capture those ideas? Don't do, it in, don't do it on your computer, do it in paper. Don't be bound by the square box of a computer Open it up. You've got paper in your notebooks, your, your binders, use it. We've got more, we can print more. And then there's Ives. This piece is unanswerable. And the way the piece is constructed is timeless. The strings are timeless. They go on and on beyond the end of this composition. They have never stopped, they never started. And this is discrete notation but you'll notice the trumpet, the flutes, clarinet. They are uttering gestural music against this timeless music. 
And it's not meant, although it's written this way, it's not meant to be square. It's not meant to be together. There's a question. And the question gets passed around. But all those flutes and the clarinet play together, but not with the strings. Again, it's the question. and an attempt for an answer. Trying to find it, it, like it's sort of like the strings. But then there's that nagging question. And the answer is, come on, it could be this. Hmm. Yeah, but there's that question. Hey, Bob. Is that better? Well, I've got the question. Will you answer it? That's not the answer. And time passes. And the answer goes unanswered. Question goes unanswered. And time passes. Okay, thank you. Time for lunch. Thank you. Thank you.